What's happening guys? Today we have a very special guest on the channel. This is going to be Josh. He has a ton of experience in information technology and just the technology field in general. And uh, I got him to come on the channel. He's uh, got another YouTube channel and I asked him to come on because I thought he uh, had a lot of really great insights. And so uh, Josh, uh, go ahead and introduce yourself and give us a little background about yourself. Uh, my name is Josh. I live in the Pacific Northwest. Um, 37 years old. I've been in IT ever since so 2007. I, I got my first part-time IT job and then it was like two years later or so I ended up getting my first full-time job in IT and I worked in kind of like normal IT capacity with like a bunch of different technologies like system center configuration manager and like basic system administration and then I kind of transitioned into cybersecurity in 2017 or so and i've been in cybersecurity ever since then so yeah awesome josh so i'll just start off uh talking about some of the general questions that a lot of people are interested in so this one's probably relatively obvious but uh what degrees would you recommend going for if you're somebody who's interested in getting into information technology and then maybe just interested in transitioning to uh, the technology field in general um, so as far as a degree goes for IT, like it's, it's in my opinion, it's not really necessary to get a degree, but if you were to select one, I would recommend just getting like any kind of generic information technology degree. Like you don't necessarily have to specialize in like uh, networks or like database management per se, because especially in your, your first job, usually people tend to start off in like kind of a help desk, like, like analyst capacity. So um, just a generic IT degree. And then secondary to that, I would recommend getting a business degree um, if, you, if you want to get a degree, right? Um, business degrees are good because I, the whole like, purpose of IT is to kind of facilitate business and provide like, some kind of platform like technology to help drive the business, like help the money makers like, make money more easily. And with a business degree, it kind of, um, kind of helps you like, open your brain a little bit and think about things in a more holistic way instead of just like technology is cool. I like computers. Like it helps you to kind of think about um, the business and like why technology and, and IT exists in the first place. So IT degree or, or business degree, it would be pretty good for IT. Also like uh, a degree is like really good to have, but the opportunity cost tends to be pretty high. That means it, it takes you um, a decent amount of time to get the degree when you could have spent that time like doing something else. Um, so because IT is not really regulated like the medical field, like you have to, you know, you have to go to um, residency and you have to get a degree and to be a lawyer, you have to like pass the bar and have a degree like with IT, you don't really need a degree. So um, if you want a degree, that's really good. Um, but if you just wanted to get into the IT field, your time might be better spent getting like an entry level certific certification like CompTIA A plus or, or something like this. Got it. Okay. Well, that segues into the next question, which is extremely important, which is what actually matters when it comes to getting a job? So we're talking about internships, grades, work experience, projects, volunteering. Out of those things, what actually matters when in the IT field specifically when it comes to getting your first job right out of college or maybe right after getting your certification? So the way I think about getting your first job in IT, there's a bunch of different kind of endeavors that you can do. And the different endeavors are kind of split up into two main goals. Like the first goal is to, it's really simple, but like the first goal is to get an interview. And then the second goal is to pass the interview. And I kind of split it up like this because there's certain things that you, that you can do that will help you get an interview, but won't really help you pass the interview and then vice versa. Um, of course, like networking is the most powerful thing to get a job but i'm not going to talk about that because i i don't really like do a lot of networking myself like i mean like social networking with people so um things that you can do to like get the interview um is you know make your resume look I as good as possible so for example um if you don't have any it experience you can always kind of generate your own it experience like you can do little you can learn something simple and do like a little project by yourself, like, for example, like experiment with like Amazon or AWS or sorry, AWS or Azure or something. And then maybe like figure out how to do something simple, like create a storage account and maybe write like a little blog post about it. And you can put it on, on LinkedIn or something Then you can put on your resume, just like little things like this you can do to 
get experience to put on your resume. And then especially for your first job, I would recommend getting some kind of certification, like a really entry level one, like CompTIA A plus those things will like be like super invaluable for you, like to get at least get the interview because you'll have like kind of experience and at least some kind of credential. So that's, that's the getting the interview part. And then the second part, like once you've gotten the interview, to pass the interview, you can do like a lot of like really simple things like, you know, polish your physical appearance and those kind of basic things. But what I would recommend, um, especially if you're going for like a help desk or some kind of help desk analyst job is to get like a whole bunch of practice questions, like a hundred, um, actually have some, so maybe I'll, I'll, I'll give you a link and maybe you can put that in the description or something, but sure. I would get like, yeah, whole bunch of practice questions and just kind of go over the questions like, in preparation for your interview, like not only to kind of learn the answers if you don't know them, but um, practice like saying the answer out loud so you get really good at articulating yourself during the interview. Because um, if you go over like 100 help desk questions, they're probably gonna ask something within here. And then when you've already like kind of went through like thinking about how you'd answer and like practice saying it to yourself, it becomes like really easy once you get into the actual interview and you you don't have to, you don't have to spend your precious like brain cycles like thinking about how to answer it. You can you know offload that because you practice it already and just automatically answer. And then you can use your brain power for other things like maybe thinking of questions for them or thinking of like ways to relate to the interviewer or just like you can be more more relaxed and kind of show them your personality more if you've already kind of practiced uh, the process. If that makes sense. So just those two phases. Focus on getting the interview things that you can do and then focus on like passing an interview practice questions and you know clean you know clean yourself up i guess as much as possible so when it comes to uh mistakes that either you or maybe other people you've worked with have made um what are some of the pitfalls that you commonly see when it comes to getting into it this is an interesting question like the pitfalls that i think of might be different than what somebody else might think of but I notice a lot of people like they come into IT and they get like a job in a certain area and they have like some kind of expectation for what they're going to be doing and like what's going to happen. But very often than not, like the reality of like what happens in the business is like way different than kind of what you imagined when you're going to school. Like you see like all these memes on, on LinkedIn, like, um, data scientists, like what you imagine and like reality and the reality is like a bunch of boring stuff, like making reports that are boring and like interfacing with like management and stuff like this. Um, so I, I think one of the biggest pitfalls is like not having an open mind and you, you do a job and then when your actuality differs from your expectation, it, it tends to like stress people out quite a bit. And um, that just leads to, you know, if you get the more stress you get, the more quickly you get like burned out and like, uh, you know, disgruntled or whatever. So, um, just, just try to keep an open mind, I suppose, uh, just kind of be open to, to anything and think about everything holistically, like why your position exists and like what you're doing to like facilitate the business. And you can kind of avoid that a little bit. I totally agree. And that's one thing I've noticed with a lot of different careers. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but with a lot of careers, especially when you're on the entry level, like the first few years, you're probably not going to be doing work that you absolutely love. You know, you're going to have to go through the, those first two years, uh, get that experience. It's kind of like that catch 22 situation where you need two years of experience to get the job. But in order to get two years of experience, you have to have the job. Um, but after you get those first few years of experience, you have a lot more flexibility and a lot more freedom um, in a lot of different careers with uh, people that I've talked to. Would you say that's true? I would say that's true. Just like, like you're saying, like, um, maybe you, you're getting into IT for like the first time and you want to be like a, a network engineer or something. So you get your CCNA and you learn about all these like kind of advanced routing protocols, like, um, EIGRP, you get really good at configuring that. And then you get your first engineering, like network engineer job. And then they just have you like, uh, doing configs or something. Um, cause it's not really, it doesn't make sense for them to like throw you onto the core router to like start configuring EIGRP cause you're like new. Um, so that kind of like perception is like, can be weird. And then, uh, also for sure. Yeah. Like when you get that ex experience, um, it, it really like opens up your, your possibility to work like many different places. And I, I've come to find kind of the more, you know, or the more, no, you know, how to do, um, people will, they'll see that you know something and they'll try to hire you for something else, even if you don't know how to do that thing, but they'll base it on like the fact that, you know, you were able to like, you know, learn EIGRP and OSPF and then work in like a, 
10,000 user environment, they're like, he must be able to like learn how to do mobile device management. So they'll like pitch you jobs for like kind of other things, if, if that makes sense. Um, the more experience you get, the more kind of opportunity like really opens up. To you. Got it. So what would you say in terms of uh, kind of like the right person or personality? Um, what are some traits that you think you would be looking for uh, that would make a really good information technology professional? Um, I mentioned this earlier, but flexibility is, is really important because we don't, business is like really, um, I don't know the right word. You don't really know what's going to happen like tomorrow or whatever. And then IT is kind of, uh, it has to, it serves the business needs. So whatever is required, like you have to kind of fulfill that requirement as an, as an IT person. So just, just be as flexible as possible. I mean, you don't have to, you know, bend over too much, like where you're, it's really sucking, but just kind of keep an open mind, I suppose. And the second thing would be, um, be really, really open to criticism. In fact, I would like recommend seeking criticism out because it's really, it's really hard for people to give negative criticism, even though that's like the, it's like the most valuable thing that you can get. Um, cause it's kind of a, an opportunity for you to like, you know, self reflect and, and think about the criticism and then have an opportunity to kind of grow, not saying all negative criticism is going to be useful, but I would seek it out and like be really good at taking that negative criticism. Um, I've had a, a lot of opportunities because I, I try to get criticism from people and I'm really, really flexible. Um, I've had, you know, people when I was a contractor, they try to like make me work full time or they'll try to poach me from somewhere else because I've worked with them before and I'm, I'm like really like kind of flexible in the workplace. So flexibility and accept criticism well will take you like really, really far. That's a great point. And uh, speaking of criticism, this is, uh, I think, my second interview video. So uh, let me know what I'm doing right and let me know what I'm doing wrong down in the description, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, hope, you know, I'm just kind of winging it at this point. And uh, Josh has been kind enough to let me <laughs> interview him for one of my uh, winging sessions, but we're, we're figuring it out yeah. here. So, <laughs> um, but awesome. So next question is going to be, uh, how should viewers go about finding out if IT is a good career for them? Because I know a lot of young people, you know, maybe somebody who's 18 looking if they want to get a degree or a certification, a lot of the time they don't really know what they like. So, I mean, how can you know what to go into when you don't really even know yourself yet, right? So how would people go about figuring out if IT is good for them? If you don't, if you're not already like a big computer nerd and you don't have like a necessarily have a real innate passion for technology, IT can still be like a pretty good career for you. So like what I would recommend doing to kind of figure that out is I would watch like, I, I guess finished watching this video and then um, maybe search out some other videos, like maybe day in the life of a help desk person. Or if you know somebody who works in IT, kind of just interview them and do like your field research to try to get a general sentiment for the field and like see if it, those people are doing stuff that you might like doing. And if, if you're still kind of interested in it, I would recommend um, just getting like a, a cheap, like refurbished computer from Amazon or something, and then just work through like CompTIA A plus curriculum. Like there's a lot of free um, a lot of free stuff on the internet and just kind of work through it and learn about the basic concepts of technology and like what an OS is and like the RAM and like hard drive and all that and, and kind of experiment with your computer, the one you bought. Um, don't ruin your, your personal computer if you can, but um, I'll just kind of work through it and work through A plus and if you can get through A plus the curriculum, not necessarily like passing the exam even, but um, just look around at different people in the field, go through the A plus curriculum. And if you still feel pretty good about it, I would, I would recommend at least um, maybe finish the cert and then just try working um, in, in a help desk job or something like this. But yeah. It, and if you, anywhere along the way, if you, after you like interview people and you're like, that seems boring. Like I, I wouldn't really recommend like putting more, um, putting more effort into it. Cause it's not really like, it's not really that fulfilling of a job, but it, it's all right enough to where if you feel okay going through the curriculum, um, you, it, it's worth like giving it a try anyway. Okay, that's interesting that you bring up that it's not fulfilling because every time I have a technical issue and I call like an IT guy and he's, you know, or IT girl and they're able to figure it out for me, I am so thankful to them. Like, and I think that they're geniuses as well. So like there's been times when I've had like audio issues, video issues, I call up my friends or, you know, I call up somebody at the company and I am just extremely grateful 
uh, to them for being able to fix that for me. So I, I do think it's a job that's relatively meaningful. If uh, maybe if you're uh, somebody who just likes solving problems for other people, um, would you would you agree with that or would you disagree? Yeah, I can I can speak to that quite a bit actually. I'm I'm glad I'm glad you brought that up because this is very. I don't know if I can say it's ironic or not, but the I really my first IT job, the part time job and in, in help desk, um, that was that's probably the probably my most favorite job in technology I ever had because I got to interface with people and like help them with their problems and they were like so happy like like you mentioned and it, it's really nice because even though that that job like paid pretty low um, I could get like instant results I can just like help people and then like treat them really well when I'm helping them and they're happy and I get like instant results and I feel good and I was like man IT is dope I want to like keep working in IT and like when I got my like kind of the next job I was still kind of customer facing um, and it was it was nice because I could I could still kind of help people a little bit, um, but it, the kind of human interaction like went down a little bit at that point, and it, it kind of it was okay, but kind of like the more my my salary went up, the more kind of uh, distance from like normal humans I got I guess, and the the problems like the more your salary goes up, the problems that you're solving this isn't always true, but the problems that you're solving are like not easy problems and it can take a long time to solve and you, you don't really get that like uh, gratification from helping end users. So it, it kind of depends on what you're doing. Like I really like working help desk. I want to work help desk like, every day, but um, I'm like ca ca caught in a dilemma between like the salary and like the, you know, how, how fun the job was, I guess. I, I rambled for a while there, but I hope that kind of made sense, I guess. I think that's a great point actually. Yeah. It, it's, uh, I think that's a great point because it kind of just goes back to kind of figuring yourself out and what you enjoy doing. There might be some people who would uh, really not like help desk and interacting with uh, the public. Yeah. Uh, and then there's, you know, it really just depends on your personality. So um, that's, yeah. that's a great point. Yeah, for sure. I forgot about that. I'm glad you, I'm glad you brought that up actually. <laughs> I'm trying to extract that value. I'm trying to extract that value out of it. Okay, so next is going to be the yes or no question section. So um, if possible, uh, we want to keep it like under a sentence or, you know, one word answers are going to be good here. But uh, yes or no, uh, do grades matter in college when it comes to IT? I wouldn't say so. No one's ever asked me about my grades and I, I don't put my GPA on my resume. So. Was it worth your time to join clubs when you were in college or maybe when you were getting your certifications? I've never joined a club, so I, I would say it's worth it if you can, but it's definitely not necessary to, to get a job. How about leadership positions? So if you join a club and you get a leadership position, would that be something that's worth it? Um, definitely worth it. Uh, so I, I would say yes, but don't worry if you can't do that. It's not really required, but, but yes, I guess. And then internships. How are internships looked at in the IT field? I would say yes, it's worth it. If you can get one, definitely go for it. Um, but you can always substitute it with something else like creating your own experience or, or anything like this. And speaking of experience, how about work experience? Uh, does that matter? It does. It, it's really helpful in uh, getting the interview, like the getting the interview portion. That's really useful. Uh, again, if you, if you don't have any, like you can't get an internship or something, you can always kind of create your own and, and st stick it on your resume. And then I think we already went over this a little bit, but is networking important? Yes, yes it is. It's the single most powerful thing that you can use to get a job, but uh, you don't need it. It's very good, so yes, but you don't necessarily need to do it. And then how about skills? How important are skills? I would say skill is paramount. So that will help you. There's the getting the interview and then passing the interview. The skills will actually get you a job. Um, so it's it's very important to develop some kind of basic skills if you're trying to get into IT. And then how about the school you go to? Is it that important to go to like an elite level school or, you know, can you go to community college and then just go to a state school? How important is the school that you go to? The school is it's not important, I would say. Um, you might even be able to go to like something that's not accredited just for IT, like people because people don't really look at it. Um, so it's, I, I wouldn't say the school is, is that important. They'll probably just be like, oh, bachelor's, okay, okay. Uh, and then, you know, 
it, so it's not it's not that important. And then this this is a tough one. Um, I'm going to have to read this. Uh, sorry, uh, this is probably tough to do, but can you rank sure, sure. from most to least important grades, clubs, leadership positions, internships, uh, work experience, networking skills, uh, projects, and the school you go to? <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's a tough one. Sorry. <laughs> No, it's cool. I'll, I'll have to read from my list a little bit. I kind of wrote them down in order, so I'll just uh, do my best here. Um, so the most most important is skill, because that's what everything is about. Like you, you just can't work if you don't have skill and you can't pass your interview if you don't have skill. Um, next important thing, I kind of grouped into one kind of, uh, I guess, a group like internships, work experience and projects. I kind of put those all under the umbrella of experience. Um, these things are really important. They help you in both phases, like getting the interview and, and passing the interview. It's pretty important. Um, I, I, I wrote certification in here as that. I don't think you, oh, you didn't give that as an option, sorry. Um, oh, no. I, I wrote certification like after uh, internships, just because it, it helps you, um, it'll help you get the interview, especially for your first IT job, it's pretty important. Um, and you wrote networking. Um, I wrote networking after networking is like it's really strong, but it's not something that you need to succeed in IT. Like I've I've never done networking before, so I ranked it pretty low. And I know a lot of people don't like to do networking. Um, I'm really introverted, so I'm not I'm not trying to go out just for the sake of like meeting people and like trying to build connections. I that's a real thing, and I, I should do that, I guess, but I just don't. So I ranked networking pretty low, and then grades. Um, Grades in school is about the same. Uh, it's, it's just not really important. I've never talked about my, my grades to anyone and no one has ever asked me about my school in like an interview setting. Like, oh, I see you, you've gone to WGU here. Like, tell me about that. That's like never happened to me. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Speaking of uh, WGU, I've uh, watched a few of your videos. WGU is uh, Western Governors or Governor University. Is, is that correct? Yeah, Western Governors University. Got it. Yeah. And uh, WGU, very interesting school. Um, you know, I did a video about a year back where I told people to, you know, kind of avoid online schools if possible with a few exceptions. And one of the exceptions that I mentioned was WGU. Now, a lot has happened since then in the world since I did that video. Uh, pretty much all schools are online at this point. So I think uh, oh, yeah. that kind of calls for a little bit of an update. Um, maybe here in the next few months, but um, let me know about WGU. What was your experience like with uh, WGU? So I, I had kind of seen it online quite a bit before I actually enrolled in it. And I, I was a member of this forum. It used to be called Tech Exams. Uh, I think it's called like, I forget what it's called now in BOSEC something community. Um, but anyway, I, I kind of watched it for like a couple of years and I, I kind of figured what it was about, at least the IT degree portion of it. Basically like with WGU, you, you pay for a semester at a time. So you pay for like six months, or I guess they call it a term. And then you can complete, like whatever you can complete in that six months is fair game. So basically the idea is um, what, what I did and like what a lot of people do is they'll, they'll register and they'll enroll and then they'll just try to do as many classes as, as they can. They'll be like really disciplined about it and just knock out as many classes as they can, like kind of thus decreasing the time it takes to get a bachelor's degree and then kind of decreasing the amount that you end up paying for tuition. And it, it's really good. Um, you can pretty much get out of it as much as you want because uh, it's, it's regionally accredited and a lot of the curriculum are industry recognized certs from like CompTIA, for example, or Cisco or ISC squared. Um, so like some of the classes will be like to pass this class, you need to get your CompTIA A plus certificate. So it, it works out really well, especially for IT, because by the time you graduate, you'll have like a bunch of cert certificates already and a bachelor's degree. So it's pretty nice. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I, that's pretty much what I did. I tried to like complete a lot of the certs before I actually enrolled. So I, I could kind of compress the time that I spent actually enrolled to doing WG work. And then once I enrolled, I just tried to like bang it, bang out the degree as fast as I could. So, yeah, um, I would say, you know, I haven't looked into all WGU degrees, so I'm not saying that, you know, everybody watching this video should go there, but I would say from, from the research I've done, there are certain degrees where WGU would be a great option because you could get it done in maybe, you know, six months to a year and it would hold the same weight 
as a four-year degree from somewhere else and it would also be a lot cheaper so that is an option for some people to look into you know make sure to do your own research never believe someone on the internet make sure to do your research for yourself <laughs> so, so for it's sure. a good option for you <laughs> but, uh, I can say that uh, out of the online school options, that does seem by far like one of the best options I've heard. Mostly, I would say like 99% positive reviews uh, from people who have, have gone there. So um, yeah, uh, thank you for uh, talking about that. That was, uh, I think I might actually make a video on them at some point. We'll see. So let's say that somebody doesn't really have any experience in IT, but they are interested in getting into it. How would they go about getting into the field? I actually made like a whole video on this uh, and I kind of talked about it a little bit in this in this interview, but people can always kind of make their own experience like a portfolio, I guess, if you will. Um, so, for example, I guess the best way to explain this would be if um, like a lot of computer science majors, like when they graduate and they want to go into software engineering, um, in addition to their degree, they'll kind of make a portfolio, like they'll build some applications or like a web app or something. And they'll create like a GitHub where potential employers can like go and look at their the stuff they made and kind of maybe get a feel for like how how good they are, I guess, or the different technologies they've worked in. So you can kind of take that same concept and apply it to information technology or cybersecurity or like kind of whatever field you're trying to get into. So for example, if you want to get into IT, you might look at some technologies that are like really in use today and like a lot of businesses like uh, Active Directory is pretty much used everywhere and then maybe Azure, like Azure AD or any concepts within Azure or AWS because that's pretty much like a lot of businesses use that and then um, you can take, for example, like Active Directory and kind of like create some content around it, like maybe a blog post or like a cheap YouTube video or something and kind of showcase your skills, like set up the environment, like create some users, use PowerShell or something like this and like take that and then publish it like on your LinkedIn or like your YouTube or blog or wherever. And then you can put it on your resume as well. And that kind of becomes like uh, experience because it, it, it works really well because um, if the employer wants to, you can put links on your resume, by the way, because it's, it's 2021 and they can go and look at it. And it's kind of like tangible, tangible evidence as to like how, how good you are, or sh like show them that you worked with this specific technology. So it's a, re a really good way to kind of generate experience for yourself um, if you don't have experience yet. So I would, I would highly recommend anyone do that. It's like super powerful and it's really underutilized, especially getting your first job. So. I, I totally agree. I think that's like kind of an out of the box way of doing it. And, you know, when it comes to uh, applying to certain jobs, a lot of the time, the best thing that you can do is kind of stand out a little bit. You know, uh, yeah. what, what a lot of people try to do, I think, and I think this is true for some things, it's good to not stand out in certain areas uh, for some yeah. things. But um, <laughs> when it comes to like showcasing your skills and projects and that sort of thing, uh, I think it's a great idea to stand out. So you know, some things I've seen people do is make videos, like like uh, record a video of themselves, kind of pitching themselves to companies, for instance. Um, yeah. kind of it kind of just demonstrates to the company that you are someone who thinks outside of the box. You're able to uh, not only showcase the skill but do it in a very creative way. And you know what that tells me, for instance, if I'm a hiring manager or a business owner, is that you're going to be very flexible and you're going to be able to learn stuff on the fly that kind of demonstrates that to me. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. I would absolutely agree with that. Absolutely. Got Your it. video froze. Oh, okay. It fixed, it fixed itself. <laughs> Again, sorry guys. If you, if you saw that, I don't know if I'm going <laughs> to cut that out or not. Um, I'm having some internet issues here. <laughs> it's raining outside. So, uh, thank you again for your patience, Josh. Appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no problem. We're having a good time. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, very important question. This is a personal finance channel after all, and I always like to say this, guys, money is not everything, but it is important. You know, uh, you don't wanna be doing stuff for free, so, and this is a personal finance channel. This is what a lot of the people came for. So uh, what kind of a pay can you expect uh, getting into the IT field, uh, both right off the bat, and then maybe, you know, a few years down the line? So this is a great question. Um, it, it kind of depends on where you live a little bit, a little bit, um, but for the most part, it, getting into the field, you can, you can expect maybe around between like 40 to 55K for like a help desk 
or a help desk job, and maybe much more than that in metropolitan areas. But just starting off, it'll probably probably be somewhere around 50k or something like this. And you you'll kind of notice um, as you as you go through your career. Um, <laughs> this is just my opinion, so kind of take it with a grain of salt. Um, like the more you have, the more you have to do things that are like creative. Um, so for example, like uh, if you're somebody who follows process, for example, and, and just does stuff for the business, like help desk and like closing tickets, your salary salary will be like a little bit lower than somebody who like defines process, like somebody who writes procedures for like the help desk people to do, or somebody who like designs the network versus somebody who just like fixes uh, like an out, like a simple outage or something like this. It depends. Um, so kind of the more you get it, you transition into like defining process and like designing stuff and like the more you get closer to like dealing with people like um organizing like projects and that kind of stuff your pay like tends to go up a little bit um and also the more you change jobs the how can i say like this isn't a hard rule but generally the more you change jobs the faster your salary will go up so for example um for me i i made a I, sorry, to, I'm not trying to like shill my videos, but I, I made a video that like outlines my whole like career and my salary progression. And if you, if you look at that, there was like one period of time where I, I worked uh, at the same job for about seven years or something. And my salary went something like um, 50K to 52K to 54K to 57K to like 60K like every year. And it's like, it's pretty, it's pretty slow. Um, but when you, if you make an effort to like upgrade your skills and like change jobs, it'll be more something like 50K to like, you know 65k to like 77k to like 90k it will like it, it tends to jump like quite a bit so um the more you get to like the closer another kind of rule of thumb is like the closer you get to the business uh end of things the more your salary goes up so for example um i'm like a i, I don't like my job right now but i'm a program manager like cybersecurity program manager and um i i have some technical aspects but my job kind of um, involves a lot of uh, orchestrating of other humans and um, making sure the the business, I guess, is compliant. So it, it tends to have like a, a higher salary. My salary right now is like 130k. Um, so I, I guess just um, depends on like what you want to do. If you want to do like hard technical stuff and you don't want to like interface with people like that that much it, it it may possibly be lower than if you work with management and like business and stuff but starting out 50k and then kind of the the upper end without getting into like c-suite pay it's going to be like maybe like 150k and then to breach 150k you have to do some like um real like hard stuff like principal like software engineer or something like this or like a cto or or, or something like this, or, you know, work in San Francisco, I, I suppose. But I, I hope that kind of answer is like kind of all over the place, but hopefully it gives uh, like a sense of what the pay is like. Yeah, that, that's a great answer. Um, I would say just uh, generally one thing I've heard in the tech field, you know, moving to Silicon Valley, you're going to have a lot of opportunity, high pay there, tech, computer science, et cetera. There's some other places that are kind of in the middle. They're not necessarily maybe as expensive as Silicon Valley, but they still have decently high pay. And again, from what I've heard, New York, Seattle, maybe Austin would be some, some other decent options there for uh, you know, getting some experience and getting up to that high pay grade. And then maybe later on down the line, after you've gotten that experience, you can kind of move wherever you want. Would you say that's kind of a, a good idea? Yeah, definitely. Definitely agree with, with everything you said there. <laughs> Got it. All right. Well, um, awesome interview. Thank you again so much. Uh, where can uh, the audience find you, Josh? So I have a YouTube channel. Just it's just Josh Matikor. It's my name. Uh, I'm also on LinkedIn, Josh Matikor. You can like you know just connect with me there or follow me or whatever you want to do. I also have an Instagram, but I, I don't really check it that much. So you can just like uh, hit me up on LinkedIn or something, and I'll, I, I respond to everyone. My channel is like not big enough to where I can't respond to everyone yet. So if you hit me up, I'll probably respond to you. Um, but yeah, it, it was a uh, really nice being here. Thank you so much for like having me on this interview. Uh, I'm quite honored. Your channel is very cool, actually. I'm sure people are probably going to ask questions down in the comments as well. And if you would like to, you can definitely respond to those down in the comments. I'll try to respond. But one thing I always tell people is, you know, on this channel, 
I kind of give you general information just to give you an idea of where to look. But if you want to get industry specific or, you know, job specific information, the best thing you can do is to reach out to people who are currently in the job you're going for. They can tell you whether it's going to be worth it for you to get a degree or not, whether, you know, you just need a certification, whether you need a, you know, a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, they're the ones that will be able to tell you uh, all those things and give you all those answers because maybe it was worth it 20 years ago, but it's not worth it now. There's, there's just a lot of things that change. So I always recommend you do that. And a good way to do that is uh, LinkedIn. It's always a good idea. And then I always say, try to get a couple different opinions, you know, get a second opinion. Uh, you might run into somebody who's overly optimistic about a career. And then you might run into somebody who is uh, pessimistic about a career. So you probably want to get a couple of opinions <laughs> just to get a, a balanced uh, uh, outlook on that. So again, thank you so much, Josh, for uh, coming on. And uh, uh, maybe we'll see you again next time. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. All right. Take care. Uh, you too.